With the coronavirus, things are moving very fast and changing second by second. And for that reason, by the time I release this video, it will be outdated. However, with all the interest and engagement from the first video, I did want to clarify a few comments and discuss some possible reasons as to why the infection rates appear to be so low on the African yeah. continent and with blacks all across the world. So let's yeah. get into it. Yeah, yeah, we in it. We in it together. Like clockwork. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Dr. Enoch Cote, the primary care physician you can trust, breaking down the topics you care about in a way that you can understand. Now, for those of you that are new to this channel, I do want to give you a little bit of background on myself. I'm a primary care physician, board certified in internal medicine. My family is originally from Ghana, but I grew up in Delaware. I went to medical school in Chicago and completed my residency training at Emory. And for the past four years, I've been practicing independently. On this channel, I strive to give you unbiased and straightforward breakdowns on the most relevant topics in the world of primary care and medicine as a whole. So if you haven't by now, make sure you subscribe to Trust PCP so you can stay up to date, engage with me, and help this channel grow. Now, like I mentioned, things are changing by the second, so let's quickly review the developments ever since the last video. There are at least 90 countries with confirmed cases of COVID-19, with over 100,000 cases worldwide and over 3,500 deaths. Here in the United States, there have been more than 400 confirmed cases in 19 states, with 11 deaths overall. My biggest concern is the limited capacity for testing, because this can lead to more unidentified cases, and in turn that can lead to more spread and less people being treated, and at the end of the day, that can lead to more deaths overall. Because of the limited supply of testing kits, we even had a case here in Georgia where a woman who was very ill went to the hospital twice and was released twice without being tested for COVID-19 until one of the physicians taking care of her in the hospital finally really pushed to get one of those testing kits. And when they finally did, it turned out she was positive. So we definitely had some room for improvement in that regard, but I still have the utmost confidence in the CDC, the WHO, and all the scientists working around the world to produce more testing kits, develop a vaccine, or possibly even a treatment. Now, in the last video, I mentioned that there's no evidence that blacks or people of African descent have any kind of resistance or immunity to the coronavirus. And some of you asked uh, the question of, well, if that's the case, then how come up to this point you haven't heard that many cases of blacks being infected with the virus or dying from the virus? And how can it hasn't actually spread through Africa like wildfire? Now, one thing I will say is that uh, for a lot of these cases, you don't really know everything about the race of those people who have been infected. And that's even the case here in the United States. Many health experts have been puzzled by the relatively few amount of cases on the African continent, especially considering the very fragile healthcare system. It seems like most of the cases identified so far are from nationals of other countries like France or Italy, who were in those countries and then traveled to Africa, developed symptoms, and then when they went to go get tested, it turned out they had COVID-19. However, you haven't been hearing about that much local spread until very, very recently with Cameroon and Togo being two examples of countries where there have been cases of spread in that fashion. So why have so few blacks around the world been infected with COVID-19? And why is the spread so slow on the African continent? Well, I think there's a few possible explanations for this. Now, one possibility is that maybe we've just done a good job so far in terms of containing the spread of the virus, which is not that far-fetched. I mean, don't be sleeping on us. We were able to contain the spread of Ebola, after all, and that took us a while, but we were able to pull it off. So maybe we're just doing that with COVID-19 as well. Another possibility is just that we're doing a bad job of detecting new infections. Um, at the beginning of the outbreak, only just a handful of African countries had the capability to actually test for COVID-19. And now, even though more of them do, not all of them have that capacity even at this moment. Now, you might have seen footage of some security uh, personnel at the airports in African countries using these scanners to try to test people to see whether or not they could be infected with COVID-19. Um, however, those scanners are really just scanners that are trying to look for a fever or increased body heat for some people. So it's possible that somebody can be infected with a virus coming from another country and they, because the incubation period is so long, they might not necessarily have any signs or symptoms yet of infection. They might not even have a fever so they can get through that scan and through that testing at the airport and just be in the country and develop this infection later on. So I wonder how many cases we're missing in that way. Another idea that I addressed in the previous video is that because of our genetic makeup, we're somehow immune or resistant to COVID-19, and that's why you haven't seen that many cases. 
But the issue with that theory, though, is that there is at least one case of uh, somebody who's African being infected with COVID-19, because a lot of us know about the Cameroonian student in China that got a lot of press. Now, the reason why he recovered was most likely because he was young and healthy otherwise, and also because he was identified or diagnosed promptly, so he was able to be treated promptly and got a good uh, medical care in the hospital over there. Plus, like I mentioned before, we are starting to finally see some local spread in certain African countries like Cameroon and Togo. So unfortunately, there might be more to come. Some people have thought that maybe climate could play a role in terms of the spread of this infection. You know, right now, during this time of the year, it is very hot in a lot of sub-Saharan countries. Um, and when you look at the weather um, and, and countries where it has been able to spread, like in, in Wuhan, China, or if you look at the weather report for Tehran, Iran, or if you look at Milan, Italy, uh, uh, Seattle, Washington, a lot of those places have kind of similar temperatures, similar type of weather at this time. Whereas um, in places in Sub-Saharan Africa, like in Lagos, Nigeria, for example, um, it's very hot, the temperature's in the 90s. So I'm not sure that really plays a role, but it is something that kind of does separate them from the other countries that are easily being affected where, where spread is going on at a higher rate. Travel patterns might also play a role too. Now, one thing that is interesting is when you look at a map of the spread of infection of COVID-19 and you compare that to other viruses that have uh, spread rapidly in the 21st century, such as SARS or MERS. Now, as we all know by now, with COVID-19, it originated in Wuhan, China, started to spread throughout that country and also throughout Southeast Asia until it actually ended up being transported to uh, multiple European countries and then ended up in the United States as well with a few, quite a few cases now and it's uh, now increasing. Um, and you can see that, you know, there are a few places in Africa where it's become, becoming to get hit, um, but it's not uh, anywhere near as much as some of the other continents that have been affected by the virus. Now take a look at a map of uh, SARS, which is Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. This is a virus that uh, you know, came about in November of 2002 and uh, was affected people all the way up until July of 2003. Overall, more than 8,000 people were affected, with the last case being in around 2004. Um, it kind of has a similar pattern where it started in uh, Southeast Asia, um, a few cases might have made it to Europe and uh, the United States. Uh, to be exact, there were eight cases in the United States. Uh, but then also with that one, you barely see any cases in the African continent as well. And then this is a map of MERS, which is uh, the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. So didn't start quite in Southeast Asia, but more so in the Middle East. Uh, but then it spread throughout Asia, uh, a few hotspots in Europe. Um, very few cases in the United States, I believe only two cases in the United States, and those were uh, associated with people that uh, recently traveled to uh, the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, but all of those, you can see how they kind of go from uh, Asia to Europe, maybe the United States, but all kind of pretty much is sparing Africa. Now, in a previous video, I did mention that CDC is perhaps the best place to get some of your information about updates on COVID-19. And I still stand by that because that's where a lot of the reputable news sources get their numbers and their reporting from as well. However, two other uh, places that are good uh, sources for COVID-19 are number one, the World Health Organization, because that can give you a good picture of what's going on on a global scale. And then also this dashboard that I've been looking at to look at all the cases worldwide is something that's developed by uh, John Hopkins University. So I can put a link to that down below. So by the grace of God, it appears that to this point, Blacks and those of African descent have largely been spared by COVID-19. Hopefully this remains the case, but it's going to be tough, so we'll see. So in conclusion, even though this definitely is not the right time to be panicking or acting irrationally, I just don't want people to be lawed into a false sense of security thinking that they're exempt from COVID-19 infection. We all need to remain vigilant and do our part in helping to control the spread of this virus by practicing good hygiene, cooperating with authorities, and communicating with each other. If we're able to do that, then just like everything else, this too shall pass. Thank you for watching, and peace out.